What happens when two rising stars of the hip hop scene who grew up together in the gritty streets of Chicago become entangled in the rap industry's gang culture that ends in violence and tragedy? This is the heartbreaking story of King Von and Lil Durk, Chicago's deadliest gangsters, whose tragic lives have left a trail of tears, pain, and unanswered questions. Growing up on the streets, Lil Durk had life pretty hard for him. From struggling with the projects to dropping out of high school, Lil Durk looked for ways to make life a little easier. The rapper had no choice but to turn to street life. Lil Durk engaged in petty crimes like shoplifting, hoping to survive off that. It didn't take long before he began dealing drugs and carrying weapons. Lil Durk caught his first weapons charge in 2012 and he was taken to jail where he served three months. After his time in jail, the rapper decided to turn his gang lifestyle away from the public eye and run things more subtly. It was easier for Lil Durk to move things underground as he became a rapper shortly after his release. My first gun case, I took a year. I was like, man, I'm stay out the street. You know what I'm saying? I just got signed. But being in Chicago, man, I don't know. Wrong place, wrong time, like I said. They found out I was on parole still. However, the question for Lil Durk was how to keep his loyalty to the Black Disciples while maintaining his persona as an innocent rapper with no affiliation to gang crime and street life. Lil Durk decided to show his loyalty to the Black Disciples by carrying on with their beef with their rival gang members, mainly the Gangster Disciple. Lil Durk did so by dissing gangsters in their rival gangs. One of his rivals, who felt the heat of his diss tracks, was rapper FPG Duck. Before the passing of 63rd and Gangster Disciple rapper FPG Duck, Lil Durk called him out and dissed him on several diss tracks like Shit of Duck and Back in Blood. On his track, Shit of Duck, Lil Durk called out FBG Duck. FBG Duck had just passed away when Lil Durk released some of these diss tracks aimed at the 63rd rapper on August 4th, 2020. FBG Duck lost his life to the ongoing Chicago gang violence. Duck was attacked a couple of weeks after releasing a track aimed at the fallen black disciples who had lost their lives to gang violence. T-Roy and Odie were both members of the Black Disciples who lost their lives to gangsters from the Gangster Disciples set during the gang wars. All the names he called on the tracks were members of the Black Disciples who lost their lives to members of the Gangster Disciples during the gang war. FBG Duck's diss track sparked outrage among members of the Black Disciples. So rapper Lil Durk took it upon himself to defend the fallen disciples from the Black Disciples set. But as always, Lil Durk was very subtle in his gang dealings. According to reports from the streets of Chicago, Lil Durk hired his right-hand man, King Bond, to arrange the elimination of FBG Duck. Being one of the deadliest gangsters in the Black Disciples set, this task wasn't difficult for King Bond to handle. We are sure to give you quality stories straight from our inside sources on the streets of major rap cities. Just make sure to subscribe and stay tuned to Rap Hive to get first-hand information. Like Lil Durk, old black and black disciple rapper King Bond was just as deadly and powerful. Aside from being best friends and colleagues in the rap industry, Lil Durk and King Von were affiliated with the same gang, which made it easier for them to work side by side when it came to gang matters and dealing with their ops from 63rd. The rivalry between the two gang sets has been ongoing for over 10 years, and it all began after a young kid from 63rd, Shondell Gregory, also known as Tuka, was murdered on the streets of Chicago by an old black gangster. It, however, went mainstream after many of these kids involved in the gang violence grew up to become rappers who shared their stories through their music. One of the rappers who capitalized his music on dissing dead ops was FPG Duck. After releasing the track Dead, where he called out fallen black disciples. The gangsters on O-Block knew that they had to act on it, and rappers Lil Durk and King Bond took it upon themselves to avenge their gang. It was about 4.30 p.m. on August 4th, 2020, when the attack on FBG Duck's life happened at the Doshe & Gabbana store, 68 East Oak Street. The rapper had gone out shopping at the designer store in a high-end street in Chicago, where he shared an Instagram post showing his location. Now, first and foremost, they pretty much detail a 15 minutes uh, of chaotic scene where basically FBG Duck, he goes to like this opulent area. Okay, it's this rich part of Chicago. It's called like the Gold Coast, right? He goes shopping for his son. Now, he goes shopping for his son and apparently goes with his girlfriend and some other person, I think, too. Hops out the car and he's waiting online. All right, well, first big mistake. You know, you shouldn't be waiting online when you got some people. I get it. Insiders from O Block revealed that as soon as FBG Duck shared his location, the block got rowdy. With the gangsters screaming and chanting, as five men hopped into two different vehicles as they made their way to FBG Duck's location to carry out the hit on his life. The police say simultaneously, as soon as Duck gets online, this surveillance footage, like a minute later, 
tracks in the surveillance footage from O Block tracks a bunch of dudes running down the stairs like wild hyenas to two cars outside. Basically, they were running down to the cars to go pull up on FBG Duck. So FBG Duck is waiting online, okay? Instantly, and you gotta somebody made a call, right? Duh, like, I mean, they don't have like, they don't have access to cameras. How do they know that Duck was there? Somebody made a call. Now, they hop in two cars. One's a Chrysler, one's a Ford Fusion. FBG Duck was shopping with his baby mama as their son's birthday was just about a week away. They were just making their way out of the store when two men jumped out of a Chrysler and opened fire at FBG Duck, hitting him 21 times with neck, torso, and groin injuries. FBG Duck's baby mama and some passerby were also hit during the attack. The assassins managed to escape from the scene as police approached to help the victims. FBG Duck was taken to a hospital where he later succumbed to injuries he sustained during the attack. Barbara's Lil Dirk and FPG Duck were suspected of having carried out the hit on FPG Duck's life to defend their block. But not everyone believed this until the FBI revealed that they had an informant who told them that Lil Dirk and King Von were most likely behind the incident. According to this informant, a famous rapper affiliated with the Black Disciples put up a bounty on FPG Duck's head shortly after he released the track, Dead. The Black Disciple rapper offered to pay a sum of $50,000 to anyone who was able to take out FPG Duck. However, when no one picked up the bounty, the rapper increased the offer to $100,000. At the time, the name of the person involved was not revealed, but the informant didn't fail to mention the most crucial part of his testimony. He revealed to the FBI that they were in fact two Chicago rappers who were involved in the elimination of FPG Duck. While one offered hundreds of thousands of dollars, the other rapper made custom-made O-Block jewelry for certain members of the Black Disciples set. Five members of the O-Block Street Gang, a faction of the Black Disciples, arrested and federally charged with committing murder in aid of racketeering. Charles Liggins, Kenneth Robertson, to Carlos Alford, Christopher Thomas, and Marcus Smart, all residents of Chicago. The year after, five men who were O-Block members were arrested for the murder of FPG Duck. The men, Charles Liggins, also known as C-Murder, Kenneth Robertson, also known as Kenny, and Kenny Mack, to Carlos Ofert, also known as Los, Christopher Thomas, Thomas, also known as Seathang, 22, and Marcus Smart, also known as Muwap, were all charged with the murder in aid of racketeering and federal firearms violations and assaults in aid of racketeering. Both Muwap and C Murder were rappers known to be affiliated with Lil Dirk's Only the Family label. But then I called the number back and he was like, blah, 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 we just want to inform you that, and these were his exact words, we just want to inform you that we, we have arrested the men who assassinated your son and i it was like some in me was like what according to the authorities these men arrested and charged with fpg duck's assassination are all members of oblock and the black disciples gang who had publicly claimed responsibility for acts of violence across chicago the authorities also claimed that a number of them used social media and music to increase their criminal enterprise. When the FBI examined data for Muwap, C-Murder, and C-Thang's cell phones, it was shocking that they discovered conversations with rapper King Von about the custom-made chains. Oh, C-Murder. Okay. Yeah. And both of these on yeah, one? 19th to 2000. Okay. Born date, yeah. And no. this is on one pendant? Yeah, 19th okay. The curve is better. I'm cool with that. And I'm then cool you just, how do you spell this? C-H-E-N-O. Or right here. Right so right spot. here, Ivan? Mm -hmm. We're just adding C-H-E-N-O? Who all got rules go? According to the FBI affidavit, King Vine discussed jewelry designs for some members of the Only the Family crew members, including Muwap and C-Murder. With the evidence from the authorities, it's pretty challenging to determine whether King Vine was telling the truth about his relationship with FPG Duck shortly after Duck passed. King Vine claimed that he and FPG Duck had settled their differences and genuinely discussed coming together for the better. King Vine took to his Twitter and said, Me and Duck settled our differences before he passed. He was talking about bringing everybody together as a whole and changing the community for the better. I'ma still stands on that, even though you diss my dead homies and family. The assassination of FPG Duck wasn't the only time King Von showed how much of a gangster he was. He was publicly accused of taking the lives of over five people, including gangster disciples Ja'Kyra Barnes, also known as K.I., Richard Modell, Derek Johnson, aka P5, Rodney Stewart, aka Boss Trail, and Malcolm Stuckey. All of these people were members of the Gangsta Disciples set on 63rd. Um, they want to know if you do a feature with Modell, 
P5, Malcolm. You know them? Nah. All right, never mind. There, we already. He already told us about Tuka. He said Tuka, one of his favorites to work with. Hey, they yeah. want to know about the Gleesh Place video. Oh, Gleesh Place coming soon, and I do a feature with all of them. All of these hits were mere speculations until the authorities revealed that King Von was the person who pulled the trigger on Jakaira Barnes, the most notorious hitter from the Gangsta Disciple set on 63rd. 63rd's most notorious hitter, Jakaira Barnes, was only 17 when she was gunned down on the streets of Chicago on the 11th of April, 2014. Jakaira Barnes uh, died last month in April. She was 17 years old. She was killed in the Woodlawn neighborhood uh, in a shooting and she was shot multiple times. And so the police thought that uh, she was targeted, that she was assassinated essentially. Before she passed away, Jakaira was rumored to have been behind the assassination of a couple of people, mostly gangsters affiliated with the Black Disciple set of Oblak, like the infamous Odie Perry, who Oblak is named after. She was also rumored to have ended the lives of Jay Money and Geroid, who were members of the Black Disciples, and friends with King Von and Lil Durk. On the street, which was a shooter or a hitter or an assassin, she was known to her rivals as somebody who was willing to, to shoot first, to ask questions later. It's all over the internet, in fact. On her own Twitter site, she uh, called herself Taekwon Assassin. Taekwon was a friend of hers who was killed and she uh, vowed to avenge his death. So, uh, female shooters and gangs are... The bullet from King Vine's weapon allegedly ended the life of the notorious Jakaira Barnes. Before he was taken out on the streets of Atlanta, King Vine was rumored to have ended the life of Jakaira, but he was often defended by the public proof of the brewing online romance he shared with Jakaira when they were alive. Before turning to life on the streets, Jakaira Barnes was a promising teenager with good grades. Her best friend revealed in a documentary that she dreamed of attending college after high school, but all that changed when she got mixed up with the gangsters in 63rd. Her mom said she was a smart kid. Um, she was kind of shy, even timid, some people said. I talked to people at the school who said it took a while for her to warm up to her classmates and to her teachers, but uh, she had some initial uh, discipline problems at the beginning and she got suspended. But after that, she was a good student, they said. So she graduated her eighth grade at Perspectives IIT Math and Science Academy. She went back there for her freshman year and things just did not work out. She had a really spotty attendance record and the next thing you know, according to her mother, uh, she was arrested for shooting a gun. Being a gangster, Jakaira was introduced to all sorts of street dangers, including engaging in crossfires with her ops from other blocks. This is how she met with Black Disciples gangster and rapper King Von. Was a suspect in three to five shootings. One of those was a murder. I talked to other sources who are closer to the streets, and those people say that she was thought to have committed at least 15 shootings. Either way you cut it. Uh... King Vine and Jakaira never hid their feelings for each other. But while King Vine wanted Jakaira to abandon the gangster life, Jakaira only lived for the streets. From sending flirty texts on Twitter to sending death threats to each other, Jakaira and King Vine did it all. In a tweet posted to King Vine's account, the rapper wrote at Taekwondo Assassin, Good afternoon, wifey. To which KI responded at King Vine from the Wick. LOL, pound funny. What up, dude? King Vine replied to KI's tweet saying, at Taekwon Assassin, LOL, I'm missing you. I be having you on my mind a lot on David. But despite having such a heartwarming relationship, King Von and Jakaira never shied away from the chance to hurt each other. They once met on a train where they got involved in a fight. After the fight, King Von wrote on Twitter, I'll get whooped on the train, lackey. Think about it. To which KI replied in a tweet, my arm up my ear and I got a bruise on my face. Ain't got but a bruise on my face. But ain't tripping that 40 cow. But a hole in that opera's face. King Von and Jakaira continued to go back and forth on Twitter until KI did something that King Von could never forgive. After King Von was arrested for taking out Boss Trail in 2012, he returned from prison to find out that Jakaira had taken out two of his homies. On the day he got out, King Von tweeted, at Taekwon Assassin, what's up ma, you don't miss her? KI responded in a tweet saying, at King Von from the wick, what up my boy, when we linking? Alongside gun emojis. King Von replied saying, LOL, what's with the guns? And on BD, you said you was gonna come see me if I get booked. What happened? KI replied to his tweet saying, How would it feel to lose your homie? Why you behind them bars during that time? To which King Von responded by tweeting RIP to his fallen homies, P Crack and J Money, who KI eliminated to get vengeance on King Von. After this incident, KI and King Von stopped being friendly until she was taken out in 2014. 
According to recent reports from the Chicago Police Department, they believe that King Von was the person who pulled the trigger on Jakaira as she made her way to a party with her friend, FBG Butter. Although Jakaira lost her life in the incident, FBG Butter sustained some bullet wounds and survived. The authorities recently claimed that King Von was the alleged hit, and as they stated in the document, an unknown M1 wearing a gray hoodie and blue jeans approached the victims. The unknown offender then produced a handgun and began firing in the direction of the victims, striking all three. The authorities further claimed that King Von wasn't arrested at the time due to lack of evidence. However, FBG Butter has claimed that it wasn't King Von who opened fire at him on that fateful day. And even the authorities know it. Man, what I know is, oh my dear. Fine didn't kill God. Period. That, and I ain't saying that because Fine didn't kill Kai. Oh, took, I, I got shot too. I was right there. I got shot too. He claimed in an interview that after the incident, the homicide unit approached him and asked him if he could identify the hitman. Only reason, no, only reason why no charges pursued on Vaughn because when homicide came to me, I'm an I'm a, I'm a, I'm a alive victim. They in there, hey, is this the person who shot you? And once I saw who they brought to the pit, no. Hell no. Nah. And I ain't just say that because, oh man, you know, it's supposed to be your Tino. You know? Although he claimed he knew the person, he just couldn't snitch and speak on it. I saw the mother who popped us. He did. On first grade. And it was grown in AC. On first grade. V Roy ain't shit to do with that shit, fuck. That shit is a, that shit a facade, but you gotta think about it though. Fine took credit for a lot of murders in real life. He said he did a lot of shit. According to FBG Butter, the person who identified the shooter immediately after the incident was a girl who was also present at the scene. She identified the victim and pointed at him when the police showed her picture. It, in real life, it wasn't him. Cause it was out there too who she told, she told, told. She know who it was, she saw who it was. She told the homicide detectives who it was. You see what I'm saying? But don't nobody speak of her. Don't nobody. Her name not even in the paperwork. You know, Lil B. Gray, but she sat in the station. She did all that. She pointed about in the lineup, all that. And motherfucker don't speak. But a claim that he kept his silence. And the person who carried out the hit has since been assassinated on the streets of Chicago. Lil Durk and King Von may have grown up together and lost most of their homies, but the two started facing tragedy together in 2019 when they allegedly attempted to murder a man on February 15, 2019. The rappers were making a deal in the parking lot of the Varsity in Atlanta with the man who has come to be identified as Alexander Witherspoon. However, things didn't go as planned as a crossfire ensued while the deal was going on. Alexander Witherspoon sustained a bullet wound to the leg during the crossfire as his Jeep Cherokee and $30,000 in cash were stolen from him. Rappers Lil Durk and King Von managed to escape from the scene unhurt, but surveillance footage captured the rappers on the scene. Javita APD says they used at least five cameras from local businesses, including this BP, as well as from the varsity across the street in order to build their case against Lil Dirk and his co-defendant. On Friday, detectives from Atlanta and Chicago testified in the criminal case against rapper Lil Dirk in Fulton County Court. They say around five in the morning on February 5th, Lil Dirk, whose real name is Dirk Derek Banks, and his co-defendant, Devontae Bennett, were seen on camera. Alexander Witherspoon decided to press charges, and after further investigation, a warrant was put up for King Von and Lil Durk's arrest. Lil Durk turned himself into the authorities. By a convicted felon, today his attorneys told us that both they and the rapper learned of these charges about a day or so ago. They also told us that he is currently on tour, at least he was until yesterday. They say they are hoping that he will be granted bond. While King Von was arrested for not turning himself in. Lil Durk and King Von were both charged with attempted murder, as the prosecutors claimed that they were the ones who fired the weapon at Alexander Witherspoon and made away with his personal effects. When the tragic incident happened, Lil Durk and King Von fans believed they would get locked up for a long time for their crimes. Now, I work with a 
<clears throat> some of Dirk's producers and the rumors like or the, the conversation within his camp was that Dirk might get washed for this and that really? was yeah that was a narrative when it happened for a long time people were very concerned that were close to him that he was going to get caught up for this so I agree it's glad that he doesn't need to have this hanging over his head in the midst of all this success but the rappers could scale through with good lawyers on their side according to their attorneys Alexander Witherspoon who claimed to be the victim was the aggressor as he threatened the rappers with his gun before anybody else pulled out a weapon. They added that the attorneys further stated that although they may have pulled out their weapons in self-defense, Alexander Witherspoon was not hurt by the bullets fired from the rapper's guns. Loder claimed in several interviews that he did not fire a weapon at Alexander Witherspoon. You're about to surrender as we speak. Yeah. How come? Because I have nothing to add. Like, I have nothing to run from. Did you do it? Did you shoot this man? Did you commit the other crimes of which you're accused? Um. On October 22nd, 2022, Lil Durk gained his freedom again when the murder charges were dropped due to prosecutorial discretion. Would King Vine and Lil Durk have continued to carry out gang dealings if King Vine was still alive? 